Have you ever wondered what unicorns eat for breakfast? Or maybe what they use to keep their skin looking so flawless? Well, even if I don't know these answers, I can tell you something equally as interesting and unicorn related. Over 20% of all unicorn startups are using HubSpot, and for good reason. HubSpot's all-in-one platform levels up your sales, software, and support so you can grow beyond your wildest dreams, boosting leads and ramping sales along the way. They even have a constantly evolving collection of resources to help startups scale. Plus, with the HubSpot for Startups program, you can save up to 90% off your first year. I'll admit it does sound a little too good to be true. But unlike that majestic and also incredibly fictitious unicorn, HubSpot for Startups is all real. To see if you're eligible to save on HubSpot and take your growth to new heights, visit HubSpot.com startups. Happy Friday, everyone. It's March 8th. I'm John Weigel here with Drea Hudson, and this is The Hustle Daily Show. Today, our manager of audience development here at HubSpot Media, Drea Hudson, leads a chat with the co-president and chief programming officer at South by Southwest, Hugh Forrest. The South by Southwest main conference and festival kicks off today, and they will discuss how the event comes together, South by Southwest's huge footprint, and the future of creativity, and much, much more. Also, if you are attending South by Southwest, be sure to catch HubSpot CMO Kip Bodner on an AI panel called How Generative AI Unlocks Creativity in Non-Creative Sectors. You can catch that on March 13th at 2.30 p.m. Central Time at the Hilton Austin Downtown in Salon DE. But right now, what do you say we give you the hits and headlines today across business and tech? Starting us off today, a Google software engineer was charged with stealing AI trade secrets by uploading over 500 confidential files to his personal cloud account and sharing them with two government-affiliated Chinese tech companies. Big yikes. Next up, Dine Brands Global, the parent company of Taco Bell, KFC, Auntie Anne's, Cinnabon, Applebee's, and IHOP, yeah, that's all those, said it's considering some combination locations for these businesses after closing 46 Applebee's locations in 2023 and opening 33 new IHOPs. So look out for more restaurant combos on the horizon. Next up, Amazon Prime released a trailer for Fallout, the apocalyptic TV series based on the popular video game franchise, and that's set to debut in April. In more streaming news, Netflix picked up its third live sporting event. It'll stream a fight between Mike Tyson and YouTuber Jake Paul on July 20th. How delightful. And finally, Robin Hood is teaming up with Clutch Sport Group, a firm led by Rich Paul, who is LeBron James's agent. The partnership, which includes Paul joining Robin Hood as a strategic investor, comes as the financial company looks to enter the sports entertainment space. All right. And moving on to the big story of the day. Our big story is a chat with co-president and chief programming officer of South by Southwest, Hugh Forrest. Our very own Drea Hudson, the manager of audience development here at HubSpot Media, leads this conversation about South by Southwest's expansion over the years and the future of the catch-all conference slash festival. Take it away, Drea. All right. All right. Hello, everyone. Today, we're welcoming Hugh Forrest to the show. Hugh Forrest, co-founder of South by Southwest, chief programming officer. How are you, Hugh? What's the vibe? How's your day? I am great, Drea. I am way excited to talk to you about all things South by Southwest today. Oh, man, same. And so we're just going to jump right into it. I would love to know, like, how do you get going when you're planning for this major, major festival? I'm doing a lot of reading, trying to understand where we are with current events. I mean, in the six months up to the event, I'm mainly current events. The six months after the event, I'm trying to, you know, (laughs) read things that are a little more evergreen this thing they call books. Remember them? Um, <laughs> you know, trying to get inspiration from that. But, you know, as always, I find that the more I read and the more I understand the expertise of others, the more it makes me sound like I know what I'm talking about. Uh, you definitely know what you're talking about. That's for sure. <laughs> um, and another question. So inquiring minds want to know, how did you get this job? Like this is like a dream job for so many people. <laughs> Come on, Dre. <laughs> the job you don't have is the dream job. But Yeah, my origin story is uh, funny. I got hired at South by Southwest way back in the dark ages of 1989. I mainly got hired because I had a computer and they didn't. (laughs) So (laughs) it's the importance of having the right hardware at the right time. That was a Mac Plus. And 
that was my initial entree into the company. That's amazing. So every year, like South by Southwest really seems to outdo itself. I mean, how do you sift through the avalanche of programming applications? And how do you figure out if the festival can handle like another growth spurt? It just seems to grow and grow and grow. Well, thank you so much for the nice words. It, it means a lot, um, particularly coming from someone like you. I mean, you know, if we're relevant, if we're compelling, if we're improving, so much of that is because we are very in touch with our community or the various communities we serve, whether that's bands, filmmakers for the film and TV festival, whether that is entrepreneurs, innovators, creators. The conference portion of the event now focuses on all kinds of creativity and innovation. So that has always been our North Star creativity. You know, I've been with the event for 30 plus years, uh, which seems much longer, <laughs> seems much longer than 30 years. But and the event has changed a lot over that time period. Yeah. What hasn't changed is that focus on creativity, that creativity being the thing that we're always following, that we're always pushing, that we're always trying to emphasize. And particularly this idea that different kinds of creative people can learn from each other that, you know, if you're a musician, you can learn a lot from connecting with other musicians. You can learn even more from connecting with an innovator in the food space or an athlete or a filmmaker or someone who's doing a tech startup. And again, that's been this formula that's made some pretty neat connections and pretty neat opportunities stem out of South by Southwest. I really love the way that you put that because truly like everybody has value to add to the experience and add to the table. And I think your programming strategy truly does kind of mirror exactly what it is you're mentioning. I mean, mixing the classic hits with the next big thing is no small feat, right? <laughs> like how do you strike that perfect harmony in the lineup, especially with topics like you're mentioning, right? You're, you have topics ranging from creators to AI. How do you bring all of that together? Well, I mean, I don't know if we have the perfect formula on that mix, but yes, there is a realization that having a mix is important. Having some people there that you've heard of before, whether that be someone from the tech industry, someone who's involved with AI now, whether that's a band, whether that's a filmmaker, but also having 20 up and comers for every one established person, the people you haven't heard of yet that are going to be doing amazing things in the next few years. You know, if we're doing our job right at South by Southwest, and sometimes we do, sometimes we don't quite do it. South by Southwest is a preview of what's going to be hot in two years. It's seeing a young filmmaker who is creating amazing things that you haven't seen any of her films yet, but you will in a couple of years. It's a young band that isn't really even touring that much yet, but they will be soon. Again, if we're doing our job right, your first taste of these digital creatives, these creatives from all different industries is at South by Southwest. Love it. Hitting on the AI track a bit more, I totally feel you when you say South by Southwest is built on creativity across industries. I think you do a great job of that. What's your take on maintaining that sense of human creativity as AI becomes an even bigger part of our lives? Yeah, this AI thing, I think is going to be big. <laughs> it is certainly big at South by Southwest 2024. It was big in 2023. I mean, we know that when ChatGPT came out in November 2022, it kind of made AI much more accessible, understandable to the mainstream. So again, we have a lot of content on AI in 2024. We have a new AI track. We have AI interspersed through all 24 of our tracks, how AI impacts music, how it impacts the film industry, how it impacts food, how it impacts government, how it impacts climate change, all these things. That is very relevant content for our community. All that said, I think that AI algorithms, automation make in-person, face-to-face events like South by Southwest even more valuable, even more compelling. People want to have that in-person experience. They want to be in the same room with another human. They want to have that face-to-face -face, uh, interaction and understanding. And I think that's one of the themes that we always rediscover at South by Southwest is, you know, on the one hand, we're an event about technology and celebrate new ways for people to connect. On the other hand, the biggest technology and the most important technology is just face-to-face -face interaction. And that hasn't changed forever. And, and bringing people together, different kinds of people together, people with diverse ideas in a city that has always cultivated and celebrated creativity in a time of the year when, you know, you have the manifestation of rebirth and creativity, i.e. spring, that has turned out to be a very, very strong formula for good things to happen. Most definitely. I mean, everything is in bloom. Yes. <laughs> it it's the perfect timing. <laughs> you said it much, much better than I could. Everything is in bloom. Everything is in bloom. 
So when we think about like the programming across South by Southwest, I mean, it is extensive and you're absolutely right. Like there's innovation, there's progression, there's all different categories that businesses could potentially attend to learn from. In your experience or kind of based on what you've built this year, is there a specific track that you'd recommend businesses not miss this year? (laughs) And if so, which one would it be and why? You know, it's hard to pick one particular favorite. Certainly the AI track, as we've just talked about, is going to gain a lot of attention. But I will say that a track that we've been doing, you know, for 20, 30 years that is going to be even more compelling in 2024 is the design track. And so much of that design track is talking about how you design for AI, how you design for human interaction in a world that is increasingly dominated by AI, how you create new hardware and new software that leverages all the advantages and minimizes the disadvantages of AI. So I think that design track is going to be really, really neat. One of the speakers we have in the design track again for 2024, and he's been coming to South by Southwest for roughly the last decade, is John Maida, who will give his annual state of the design world. And I think it's this year it's titled Design versus AI. So you can kind of <laughs> you know, see where we're going with that. But again, that's a great place for businesses to kind of park themselves and understand this. And, and I'll also say that, you know, you don't have to be a designer to attend design sessions. One of the things that we always try to emphasize to attendees at South by Southwest is stretch your boundaries, go outside your comfort zone, go to a to sessions, to bands, to networking events that you don't know anybody, you don't know that topic. And that's a great way to expand your horizons, make new connections, create new opportunities. Definitely feel you on that. And so right now, like in the HubSpot cycle, we're actually planning for Inbound, which is our pretty large scale annual event. <laughs> pretty and- <laughs> large scale. Nice way to it's a good size. soft it's a play good that, size. okay? <laughs> It's not the smallest thing in the world. <laughs> um, so with Inbound, you know, we at HubSpot Media, we're going to be focused on our like digital buffet of products. So we've got YouTube, we've got podcasts, we've got creators, and we're responsible for kind of bringing all of those digital products to life. I'm a little curious about your playbook. So one of the things that I'm always thinking about when it comes to when we have these experiences is how are we going to measure the actual success of this thing, right? Like, how are we going to measure our impact? How do you gauge the success of your programming efforts? And like, what wisdom can you share with any other fellow event organizers or businesses (laughs) listening right now who are like swimming in the metric sea? Yeah. I mean, on the simple side, it's the eyeball test. Did that room fill? And did the speakers keep the people in that room or did people leave? Two, it's really pouring over feedback post-event and trying to understand which sessions were most compelling, which sessions were less compelling. I think that one of the challenges for South by Southwest, and I think probably so for inbound, is you've got all kinds of different people attending. So if one, you know, one person says, this is the greatest session I've ever saw, the other person is like, ah, this is boring as heck. So how do you understand, you know, is there some kind of objective truth in there? There probably isn't. But again, there's just trying to do as much follow up on uh, attendee feedback and reading on social media, reading whatever stories were written, uh, traditional media were written about sessions. Hopefully doing all that gives you a a better perspective and understanding of what happened at the event. I think one of the challenges as an event organizer, and you probably see the same thing, is you know, uh, you don't see much of the event yourself, right? No, <laughs> you miss it. You miss the whole thing. Yeah, you, you experience it by, the, does the crowd seem like they're happy today? Or are you getting a lot of good emails or negative emails? And that is sometimes frustrating, not knowing how that thing turned out. But again, I, I think there are lots of ways to understand hard metrics and soft metrics in terms of what went right and what needs to be improved. Gotcha. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. We'll also add that to my playbook. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So when it comes to audience development, which is like what I'm responsible for here at HubSpot Media, reaching new audiences is always a main priority for us. Can you tell us about some of the ways that South by Southwest has grown its audiences by either way of your awesome programming or your distribution across owned properties as you're kind of announcing the event or announcing speakers or announcing tracks? Well, going backwards first, I mean, certainly as we've become more sophisticated in recent years with content during the event, content distribution during and post-event, that's opened us up to a lot of new audiences, and that's great. 
I think as well, we get about 60 to 70% of our content via this community process called the South by Southwest Panel Picker, which is encourages anyone in the community, i.e. anyone who can get online to enter a speaking proposal. That entry process happens in June. We'll typically get, you know, 5,000 proposals and we will that down to the best of the best of the best of the best, which is roughly 600 to 700. But why I mentioned that in terms of your question of audience development, I think that's one of the ways that we've really expanded from being just an event that focuses on music or film or technology to, you know, someone who's involved with med tech, uh, health tech saying, huh, I've got an interesting idea about creativity that I'd like to speak about at South by Southwest. So that is very much opened new audiences, opened new demographics, opened new ideas for us. And it's also been a way to see what the community big picture is. You know, if we go from 20 proposals about drones one year to 120 the next year, wow, we know that this community, the people who are really super fans of South by Southwest are really into drones this year. We should do more of that. So that process has been great for us in a lot of ways and really helped with the audience development. It also engages our community, you know, eight months out, which community engagement is what we're all trying to do, right? So it's been a yeah. great uh, mechanism for that as well. Cool. I love it. Obviously, you're one of the newest team members at South by Southwest. Haven't <laughs> been there for over three decades. I'm really interested in in your vision for the festival's future. I know we talked a little bit about creativity, but I'd love for you to share a few things that you're pumped to keep going when you think about the fest in the future. And also that like, you'd be ready to kind of say bye to <laughs> what kind of comes to mind to you when you think about that? Well, again, the event has thrived for 35 years because of this focus on massive creativity in all its many forms. And I think that that is big picture our path forward as much as the world continues to change with all the many forms of AI. I think that the creativity that has worked for South by Southwest has particularly mirrored the creativity in the city of Austin. When we started in 1987, we focused entirely on music because there was a just an incredible music scene here. There's still an incredible music scene, but there are lots of other scenes here now. In 1994, we added film and multimedia because there was this burgeoning film scene out of Austin. These two young directors, uh, Rick Linklater and Robert Rodriguez. And on the technology side, you had this young kid named Michael Bell selling computers out of his dorm room at UT. More recently, University of Texas added a medical school, and that's one of the reasons we started doing more health and med tech content at South by Southwest. Our friend Elon now has a big Tesla factory in Austin. That's one of the reasons <laughs> we do a lot of transportation stuff. So if you ask me, what does South by Southwest look like in five to 10 years? I'm not quite sure, but I think it will look a lot like what Austin, Texas looks like. If Austin continues to push into AI and becomes this, you know, world center for AI innovation, we'll push a lot more into AI at South by Southwest. If Austin becomes the sneaker capital of the world, then we'll just see a lot more sneaker hmm. stuff in, in Austin. I think we're kind of close <laughs> on one of them, less close on the other. But again, that's always been one of our competitive advantages or formulas for success is leveraging emphasis emphasizing the creativity in Austin. One of the main reasons South by Southwest has been so successful because it's a fun city to come to, to visit for a few days, uh, particularly in March where it may be cold where you are in Boston, but maybe <laughs> warm in beautiful Austin, Texas. Lots of great food, lots of great people, lots of things to do. And that's been a, again, a recipe for success. That's awesome. Well, Hugh, thank you so much. It's been an awesome, awesome conversation today. I guess the last thing to say is keep Austin weird. <laughs> keep Austin weird really means keep Austin creative. So that ties into everything we've talked about. Creativity, you know, it's what makes us human. And in 2024, as we see more and more machines taking over, we really need to lean into our humanity. So, yeah, keep Austin weird. Couldn't agree more. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon. Cheers. Thanks, Drea. All right, and that's going to do it for us today. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show. If you're at South by Southwest, have a great time. And once again, be sure to catch the panel, How Generative AI Unlocks Creativity in Non-Creative Sectors with HubSpot CMO Kip Bodner. That's on March 13th at 2.30 p.m. Central Time at the Hilton Austin Downtown Salon DE. 
We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go get yourself signed up at thehustle.co slash email, and we'll see you real soon. Hey, everybody, let me tell you about this great podcast that's available right now. Creator Science, hosted by Jay Klaus, is brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, which is the audio destination for business professionals. Creator Science goes behind the scenes with today's top creators. Through narrative interviews, Jay Klaus explores how creators like Tim Urban, James Clear, Tori Dunlap, and Cody Sanchez are building their audiences today. And by learning how these creators make a living with their art and creativity, Creator Science can help you gain tools and confidence to do exactly the same. I was actually listening to an episode recently where Jay had on Dr. K, who is a Harvard psychiatrist. And Dr. K helps a lot of creators with performance, burnout, and dealing with a lot of negative feedback online. It's a great hour of conversation with Dr. K, where Dr. K really breaks down what it means to be a creator today and the burnout that a lot of creators do experience and what to do when you get that burnout, because you will. And you can listen to Creator Science wherever you get your podcasts, and I definitely suggest it. Listen to Creator Science wherever you get your podcasts.